Welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill. I'm the pastor of Providence Presbyterian Church located in Evansville, Indiana. Today is Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023. This is edition number 75 of season eight as we continue looking at the Westminster Confession of Faith. Particularly, we are now in chapter 14 of Saving Faith. We're going to consider paragraph two together today, but let's pray first and then we will take this paragraph up just very briefly. Uh, together. Let's pray. Father, as we come again to your word, we come to these very important truths. We again ask for your spirit to guide and direct us. Uh, We know indeed that he is the one who teaches us and uh, he is the one who penned these things. And we pray that we would then therefore understand your word all the more as he guides and directs us. We pray that you'd help us especially in this area, that we would trust you all the more, that you would increase our faith in you and our trust in you. May you help us, we ask, for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, we considered yesterday in the Monday edition, paragraph number one, we looked at the fact that the grace of faith whereby the elect are unable to believe to the saving of their souls is the work of the Spirit of Christ. It is the Spirit's job to do this. Paragraph two, we come now to a fuller, a, a more a fuller explanation of this particular doctrine when we read there, by this faith a Christian believeth to be true whatsoever is revealed in the word for the the authority of God himself speaking therein and acteth differently upon that which each particular passage thereof containeth, yielding obedience to the commands, trembling at the threatenings and embracing the promises of God for this life and that which is to come. But the principal acts of saving faith are accepting, receiving, and resting upon Christ alone for justification, sanctification, and eternal life by virtue of the covenant of grace. There's a lot here to unpack. I'm going to work to do it in a very a very short manner um, in a way that I hope is um, uh, useful uh, to uh, God's people, uh, to you uh, even today. First, we note that this faith uh, is one that a Christian believeth to be true whatsoever is revealed in the Word for the authority of God himself speaking therein. Now, 2 Peter 1, uh, verses 20 and 21, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Now, This simply makes the argument that it is God who is the authority of Scripture and it is therefore then our responsibility as those who have been changed by the work of the Spirit of God by faith to believe whatsoever is written therein. Uh, This is important, of course, for Christians to believe and it goes on to even add to this in in, in manners uh, listed in this paragraph that they act differently upon that which each particular passage thereof containeth. Uh, yielding obedience to the commands. Now, of course, with my whole heart, Psalm 119, have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Those who have a new heart placed in them by the Spirit of God, they, they want to obey the commands of, uh, of God's word. John 14, and John 14 and verse 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, Christ says. Trembling at the threatenings. Uh, Ezra chapter 9 and verse 4. Then were assembled unto me every one that trembled at the words of the God of Israel because of the transgression of those that had been carried away. And I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. What does this mean? What is tremblings at the promises? Tremblings uh, at the threatenings? Well, this means that we, we need to come to God's word and we need to come to everything that he tells us as newborn creatures, we need to come with a certain sense of reverence. This is not a peer. This is not my buddy. This is the God of heaven who has penned these words for me, and I need to listen to them. You need to listen to them with a sense of fear, a reverence, and an awe as he gives these to us. Embracing the promises of God for this life and that which is to come. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 13, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth. Now, God has given you many promises. He's adopted you into his family. He has justified you. He's adopted you. He's sanctifying you, and 
He's given you saving faith to believe all that he has said in his word, including his promises. And so you must believe them. You must believe what he says. And where you find yourself weak or struggling, you plead with the Spirit of God to help you believe that which God has said. But with all these things said, these are all important things. The confession says something of a vital importance, that the principal acts that is to say, the foundation, the root of saving faith, are accepting, receiving, and resting upon Christ alone. Now, there are three things here, accepting, receiving, and resting. You can remember them, just A-R-R, accepting, receiving, resting. We accept all that is offered, uh, all that Christ offers to us in the gospel. That is to say that he is the, the alone sacrifice for sin, your sin, my sin. He alone is the one who has atoned for my sin. Only he can be as the perfect lamb of God. And we accept that truth as fact and true to what the Bible says. Many people accept this information. They know it mentally. They have some certain assent to the truth of these things, but they never go any further by making it their own, by receiving that truth, not merely as a historical fact, but receiving it as that which is mine. That is to say that Christ died for me. It is personal. It was personal to him. It's personal to you that I accept the truth, the truth claim of Christ, and I believe it for myself. I'm resting upon him, even as the people of old in the Old Testament would rest upon the picture presented by that lamb from their own flock that they would offer as a sacrifice, recognizing that as they did that, God would, would forgive them. We do the same here. We've received that as our own, and we simply and only rest in that which Christ has done. We don't add to our salvation. We don't try to. We don't look to God and tell Him, oh, look, you know, I believe all the truths that your word says, but I'm also a pretty good person. And so with both of those things working, uh, everything's okay. No, no. We rest on Christ alone. Notice how it puts it in the confession for our justification, our sanctification, and eternal life. We, we rest on Christ through all of our days. Saving faith moves us in this direction that we rest singularly on Him only as we move through our lives. And it's only Him and Him only that we trust. Many people have received Him in Jesus' day. John 1, verse 12, many people talked to Him, many people encountered Him, but they did not believe Many things happen. Acts 16, 31, And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. This is the Philippian jailer, and indeed he was saved. But there are many in the world today that they, they give historical credence to the facts of Christ, but they don't believe the truth claims he offers, the gospel that he presented and preached, and they certainly aren't resting on him alone for salvation. They're resting on themselves, their own abilities, their good works, or they deny the fact of the need for salvation and some way, shape, or form. But saving faith moves us to do these three things, to accept, receive, and rest upon Christ and Him only. And so these are important things. And as our faith sometimes wanes and sometimes wavers, we continue to ask for the continual, continual supply of the Spirit to help us in these matters. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave me a note. The way to reach me is there before you on the screen. And so until the Wednesday edition, when we finish this chapter, chapter 14, look at paragraph number three. May the Lord help you today. May you walk in his ways. God bless.